Blessed be the name of the Lord that has given us a new day, a day that we have to take stock of life. Think of life. What is it? How should it go? Where should it go? How should it be? How can we handle and how should we handle life? Today we are going to read Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 and we are reading verses 23 and 24. Luke 9, 23 and 24. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Praise the Lord. Life has crosses, daily crosses. Every day is a different challenge. As human beings, we generally have some kind of feeling that somehow life should have been a bed of roses. You wake up and things just happen and whatever plans you had in mind comes to being, comes to fruition. Whatever you think you want to engage in gets itself done. That's the way we think about it. As it were, we would like to remote control everything. You sit in one place and everything gets sorted out. Everything gets done. You know, you like it when things tend to happen in that direction. The other one is done. This one is done. We don't like the challenges. Life has crosses. Life has serious challenges. And you have to face that life. Coming into life is a cross. You know, when a child is born... The first thing that makes anybody feel convinced that this child is alive is that that child cries. And you see a child comes out, is not crying. They will beat the child, ka, 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 until it starts crying. And, oh, yeah, the child is born, the child is alive. From the first moment you step into this world, you are carrying a cross. And if you are not ready to carry the crosses of life on a daily basis, then you are not ready to live. We expect life to be a continuous celebration. No. Whatever you call celebration comes inside, within the cross of life, of that day. Every day is a cross to carry. So let's bear that in mind. It's a daily thing. And the next verse says something very important. And what's that? You can figure out an easy way out of the cross. You want to dodge the cross. What should be handled for that day, for that moment? You don't want to handle it. You want to skip it. Maybe it was a day that you are not going to have money, but you want to look for money by a crooked source. You might as well steal. You might as well rob. You can play one game or the other, cheat one way or the other, arrive at what you want. What have you done? You have shifted away the cross of the day, but you have also shifted away your life. You say, whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it. You are looking for how to make that life be what you want. That's what I am saying. The example may not look very apt, but it's correct. You want to get a certificate in a school, or you want to graduate from a university, something, anything, from some program. And all of what you do is cheats in the examinations. Or you might as well pay for the certificate. And you think you are gone. You are losing your life. All of the crooked things we do, we are losing our lives. There is a schedule you must pass through in life. That's what Jesus was saying. Every day of your life has a challenge that you must overcome. When you dodge it, when you do the crooked way, when you try to play some game, something crooked, and you think you have achieved it. We do all manner of things. There are people who have all manner of affidavits and all manner of lies concerning their dates of birth, their educational qualifications, their experiences in life. They will come up with stories everywhere in this world you find those things. What have they done or what are they doing to themselves? 
they have, as it were, craftily, according to them, avoided the challenge of life for those moments, for those days. But they have not. They are building up disasters for themselves. So if you are not willing to take up your cross daily, what are you doing? You are thinking that you are preserving your life, whereas you are actually destroying it. But if you follow the path of Jesus, the path of truth, the path of righteousness, the path of holiness, you will not do those crooked things. You won't get involved in armed robbery. You won't get involved in stealing and cheating, in falsifying figures, in changing data, changing information. You won't get involved in telling those lies. You won't get involved in looking for an advantage where you shouldn't get one. You won't get involved in supplanting another person, taking the person's position, taking the person's right and due. Because you realize that those things do not keep you in the path of righteousness. As a matter of fact, those things will take you away from Jesus. And if they take you away from Jesus, they are taking you from life. When I talk about life, I'm not talking about just the ordinary life here. How many years do you have to live on earth? Are you going to live 200 years? In all of the past generations, except those of the ancient times, we don't have people living 200 years. So whatever, 120, 100 and maybe 130, sometimes 140. Yes, maybe. But even if you lived that long, what have you achieved by living that long? So you say, I'm trying to preserve my life so that I'll live long upon the earth. What would you achieve? When you are done with this life, which is a temporary passage, and everybody will pass from this life, every single person will pass. When you go over to the permanent side, what would you have done? You would have lost your life. Instead of going to heaven, you will go to hell. So, bottom line, face the challenges of your life squarely. Realize that they must be there. Jesus said, in this world, you have problems. Realize that those problems must exist. If you are a child of God, you realize that as the problems come, you must live righteously. So that however long you stay in this world, you stay with and in the peace of God. And hereafter, you have eternal life in heaven. That is what is important. Not to go to hell because you were playing some games. I like to say that it is a very wrong idea for anyone to pass through all of the problems of this life, all of the challenges of this life, wade through the issues day in and day out, and then end up again in hell. Did anybody push you to hell? No. Did the devil drag you to hell? No. We go to hell on our own accord, on our own determination, on the things we choose to do. Choose this day to do right. Choose this day to walk in the path of Jesus, in truth, in righteousness and holiness, that you might have life both here and in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.